Hello, uh, Jay Mann here uh, from Ship Bottom, New Jersey. Uh, pretty much a lifetime resident of LBI, where uh, along with surfing, fishing, clamming as a living, uh, I've taken a lot of time to do the proverbial beach combing, and in doing so, I've been motivated to take on the different forms of, uh, I'll call it folk art, uh, spontaneous LBI folk art. And uh, one of the first things I started with was uh, primitive dotting. And primitive dotting uh, came to me kind of spontaneously without knowing the Australian, the famed Australian connection, which is, a, they call it a, a, dream, a dream painting. I was very uh, pleased with that, <laughs> to have, find out that uh, this theme, which I almost couldn't shake, was intrinsic, it was in, inside. And uh, the colors, that was much tougher. But basically, I wanted to stay with the natural format because uh, this is kind of what we start with or what I start with, it is a blank canvas. It's the same as a blank piece of paper, <clears throat> and that actually presents challenges. <laughs> so you say, well, how can I do this? And as you'll see <clears throat> with some of these, um, I felt minimalist and others more complex, and some right down at the far end here, uh, down to the very edge. And that is a lot of dotting. Now, interestingly, um, for dotting, I actually a lot of the way to find small sticks and twigs. Uh, yes, you can use toothpicks, which the, the aboriginals use, but I wanted something a little closer to nature, and that's how I get the dots, which took many years to perfect. Here's something, and you can test because this uh, part of this display uh, is, is shown here. Um, I never let two dots touch, and you can, uh, I have larger canvases because I transferred but that is the obsessiveness of it. And I've had people actually go over and say, you don't let it know, because when I'm doing it, if the two, the one touches, I have to scrape it off real fast. So basically, uh, life on LBI has led me to kind of a, a very folk art uh, form of expression, which I think, and I try to teach, isn't everybody, especially kids. Um, showing the different uh, patterns you can go with or, or uh, looks or feels or spontaneous uh, artistic uh, show from just pen and a piece of poster. I'll share a few that I've done. Uh, this one is just one color. And I started in one corner and obviously it's geometric shapes and very enjoyable. Probably took, what, a week of three to four hour sessions. But that's part of the fun. And again, I want to show what just a single color can do. Now, this, you have to admit, has a clam feel. I didn't try it as that. It's just a shape. But somebody else said it has a bit like a shallot or an onion. So, uh, yeah, see, that's, I had none of that in mind. I just started doing one shape and then just kept repeating that, which is another way, another way to have fun on a blank uh, a blank poster board is simply to uh, repeat and each one's going to be a little different. Now sometimes I get what you might call organic and try to create creatures. Now, okay, this could be a little spooky, uh, but that's what came out. That's when I decided oh, I'm going to try for a, a, a blood worm with all its legs and everything, but I don't want it to look just like a blood worm. So I came up with this pattern, which there's something called a brittle starfish that has a very similar look. So maybe I remembered that when I was uh, creating this. But again, it was all very spontaneous, which is the main thing, is to just grab and go. And then sometimes if you really, and again, this is just two colors, if you want to get a little obsessive, a little, let's see how, it's, many different shapes we can get. Uh, here's a perfect look and again that's just two colors. You have your black pen and fill it with yellow and a fun part here and even if you do your simple shapes is filling in is just coloring. It's just a coloring book. So the the outline that's all the hard work and then the the uh, filling in with the color that's that's the fun part. And to show just how tiny, and this will need it. Uh, eventually, you can see there are 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tiny little patterns here. This took weeks and weeks to do. And finally, just to show a, a mixture of colors, um, this is how you work. This is after you get your pattern, you say, I'm also going to throw in quite a few uh, color arrays. And um, as I'm now doing them, uh, most recently I'm getting more into the, the color patterns. Again, these are very supposed to be spontaneous, fun. It's not high art of any form. It's, it's folk art and it's uh, kids art. And uh, I think even parents might be surprised at, uh, at some of the uh, patterns, the designs, and maybe even the inner meaning of some of the, uh, uh, the forms that come out, of, uh, come out of this type of art. As I do my folk art and, and uh, uh, spontaneous art, let's call it that, uh, using just about whatever is available, a lot of natural things, um, I recently was sent a fountain pen. Um, never had one. <laughs> I'm talking about the type with the uh, you dip in ink, a dip pen. Um, and that led me into um, one of the most, I don't know, what would I call it, Dema uh, interesting, self-interesting uh, type of art. And that's where you just take a blank poster board. This one came from as far away as Walmart. And you take a white poster board and a single pen. Now, by now, I've graduated to a bunch of color pens. And you just let the mind kind of go crazy. You do lines, you do whatever pattern comes to you. I find, I like to keep a, uh, a theme going by that I mean, uh, uh, once I start a, a pen stroke, I like to end it. I like to, to bring it to an end there. But the fun part is where you get to cross over one of your creations and you make sure you continue it through the other creation. You go down, okay, you put maybe a shark's head there, and then you have your inner, inner area. Now, what's fun with uh, a, a loop, an opening inside, is then you cross over. Let's go a little square this time. And just let the pen go where it wants. And the creations, um, I sometimes have a creation that repeats itself. And you'll see that this does kind of look like a, a creature of some sort. Uh, especially if I put that there. Um, that almost looks like one of those aliens everybody's seeing now, right? Um, and then another fun thing is uh, if you don't want to do the angles, uh, you can do a square. Now that by itself is okay. But watch what happens when you put straight lines down there, a line here. Now you have kind of a three-dimensional square. And in that, you might even put another square and run one of your continuing patterns through there. Let's go way down here on this one. And then come back up. Look at that. Fill in this little design a little bit more. And if you want to do a, a pattern that you kind of are familiar with, I'm not sure what I'm familiar with here, but there's a, a creature. So basically, um, what you have is a, a, an open platform, a single pen, and uh, the ability to uh, create, ability to find some, uh, I know this is a weird word for youngsters, the gestalt. What that actually means simply is an inner, an inner uh, pattern, an inner uh, feeling for a certain shape or something like that. And uh, that comes out in these. And if you want to do, say, do you want to do a dinosaur? That's pretty easy to do, right? Look at that, all one, all one motion. Yeah, throw an eye in if you want. That's a pretty sick looking dinosaur, but um, when you start to add a, a giant uh, rock to it, and in that rock you have an opening which has a triangular shape. How about that, coming out of there? coming down to here, coming down there. See how that makes, in fact, let's make a little tip on there. And see, this is, uh, this is just a pen and a blank piece of paper. And any age, any age, 
can make a shape appear. I'm not sure what that shape is, but that's the fun part. Pretty, it doesn't take long. I mean, look how much I filled in just that short time, and pretty soon this whole thing will be covered. But of course, you can start adding some other colors. I don't know if I have any with me right now, but there's a chance to add, uh, look at that beautiful blue. So you add another uh, blue shading to that, and then you do a whole other pattern there in the new shade. And to me, the more spontaneous, the better. The more it just comes out of your fingers, like, wow, I'm going to go here next. And again, any age, anybody, I, and no, you don't need a big piece of poster board. You can do this uh, on a, an art tablet or something like that. And what you'll start to notice is that certain patterns repeat themselves. And it's probably putting, thinking too much into it, but that could be kind of an inner artistic aura that's coming out that everybody... Uh, that everybody is, uh, has possessed, has, has in their possession in some way or another. And guess what you can do, and this is where I get kind of obsessive, you can go in there, see these two colors, and then you do cross lines in them. And boy, does that add dimension to it, does that add depth to it. And you can make the lines go a little different direction. Come across there. And look, look how that creature, if you want to call it that, comes to life when those inside lines come together. And you'll see with some of the art that I've done already that uh, it's not only relaxing, but the final product can be pretty dang interesting.